table. The floor has been swept. Hey guys, welcome to our first week in Bali. Uh, this week I have three really cool things I want to share with you. The first one was uh, settling in and organizing all the lifestyle stuff that I think you'll find valuable. The second one was there was an earthquake in Bali. It was like really intense. And then the third one was our favorite breakfast spots around Barawa. There's three of them and I'll let you know which one is our favorite. And then there's like a bonus one at the end that's like kind of funny, um, but uh, you'll never guess what happens. All right, see you in the video. <laughs> you want to go swimming, Sani? Yeah? Is that what you want? <laughs> Funny girl. You better beware, the rumor is out. Nothing can stop me, I'm going for gold. I'm out of the dark. I'm out of the cold. Hey, how you doing? So it's our first week here in Bali, and there's a couple of things that we need to get sorted. I thought I'd just show you quick outside of our room. Uh, this place is just obviously massive. Like it's, sorry about that. I'm just still working out how to use the gyro thing. <laughs> so uh, we got here and there were three things that we need to do. We need to get a nanny, we need to get food sorted from a chef, and we need to get baby supplies. And so the nanny was kind of surprising because she wasn't our first choice. We ticked to the nanny agency we can recommend. It's like Finny Nanny or something. It's, and she wasn't our first choice, but she showed up in the meantime before our first choice came back to Bali. And Zali just fell in love with her, like absolutely loved her. So I think that was like a really surprise. And we've got her, it's about 700 Australian a month. And she works uh, from Monday to Friday, which means that Donna and I can go and get all of our work done, which is just super helpful. And then we also have a chef that's doing Monday to Friday as well. It's $35 per, uh, per week, I believe and they cook for us. We just gotta pay for groceries on top of that and they drop off the meals and they're healthier. So things like rice and chicken and curry and mashed potatoes and um, he does soups for Zali as well. So Zali gets all the vegetables in, so it's really helpful. And then the last thing is baby supplies, which is a little bit harder to get uh, than we realized uh, in Bali. So uh, you'll find out what happens next in the video that I'm just about to share now. <laughs> but yeah, so the, the baby supplies and Donna's gonna do a whole video just explaining the whole baby situation as well because that's more of her thing than it is mine. All right, see you now. See you now, see you later, bye. All right, so we've just come looking for baby stuff. Can't see me, here we go, we've just come looking for baby stuff. We've come to Clandies and check this out, guys. It's fucking closed. Fucking closed. 20 minutes on the scooter in the middle of fucking nowhere and it's back. So I thought I'd talk for a moment to the realities of recording your life and I think the first thing is it's like we've both had to get used to flicking the switch in our mind that oh we've got to record our life like you're not used to recording every little bit of your life. Um, I think the other part as well is Caleb and I didn't expect that it would be quite as challenging putting it all together so you've got to think when you've got two creative minds coming together like sometimes they'll have different thoughts and views about what it might look like and so the first week we very much had to get on the same page. Like I think now going forward, now that we are on the same page, it's gonna be a lot easier. But the first week trying to get on the same page, it was actually quite challenging. The other thing that we found as well is like, putting your life out there means that you're probably gonna open yourself up to getting judgments. And one of the judgments that I got um, this week was you know, sharing a photo or video or whatever it was of Zali and I on the scooter together. And I didn't even think anything of it honestly because like it's so normal here like not just for the Balinese but for Westerners as well like people who live here you just you jump on a scooter with your baby like that's what you do and I got quite a bit of judgment and backlash from it some people were, like genuinely caring and some people were just flat out judgmental um and I was like you know that's what you've opened yourself up to Donna like that's what that's the world of vlogging that's the world of like opening your life up to people and you have to kind of be okay with that some people are going to love it they're going to be inspired by it some people are going to be triggered by it some people are going to have their opinions on it you know it is what it is like that's the life of vlogging so one of the really cool things about this place is there's a playroom for Zali which is awesome because one of the things we're really, really worried about when traveling full-time is that she wouldn't be able to socialize or she wouldn't be able to make friends but there's this playroom here and Donna's got some footage of it uh, which she goes and does the walkthrough. So make sure you're subscribed and push the like and subscribe. I'm so terrible at this. Put the like and subscribe button and then hit the bell notification. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I just heard it. 
Um, but yeah, so she had a really good opportunity to make friends, uh, which has been really cool. It's really important to us. So um, just check this view out, by the way. I was going to take this chance to talk about the kind of style of video that we're planning to do. And you might have seen on YouTube, there's a lot of kind of budget traveling. There's also a lot of couples that like to go hiking up mountains and stuff. And both Donna and I, that's not us. Like, we totally are not the family vlogging ch channel that's going to be staying at $7 a night backpackers or climbing out Mount Agang or however you say it. I can't even say it, let alone walk up it. Uh, so that's totally not going to be our style. I think from us, you're going to see more developmental things like what's going on for us in our businesses and like personal lives as we integrate this reality that is Bali, which is kind of unfamiliar to a lot of people. Uh, and then the other thing would be lots of foodie stuff because we love food. So you'll see lots of breakfast places, which is probably a really good segue to the breakfasts that we had this week. So have a look. So tell me, how is it? How is your breakfast? It's really good. It's the best breakfast we've had so far. Caleb like, is loving this place, loving the vibe, aren't you, babe? Yeah, I like the like kind of dark, kind of moody vibe, but also like the bacon, proper bacon. It's so hard to get good bacon in Bali. Like, I don't know, I don't really love bacon. Like, I love bacon. But, like, to get a good bacon, it's really difficult. So they do it well. So one of the things Caleb and I have been integrating a little bit now that we have a nanny is we've been going out for breakfast a lot. So you're probably going to see a lot of breakfast content <laughs> um, because we really feel like it nurtures our relationship. You know, we have this little like launch and land strategy where we launch off, we make sure that, you know, we have some breakfast together, we have a bit of a chat, you know, we give each other a kiss to the pie before we start our days and we go off and yeah, we both work at home, but we often go work in the same space. And we'll come back and we'll land with a little kiss. And so this is part of our launch strategy and probably why you're going to see a lot of breakfast content. So one of the things I really love about Maui is, is they actually have like a little science lab for kids. So you can actually take your kids there during the week and they have like little classes and programs that you can sign your kids up for. Um, but every Sunday they also run like a little thing where the staff um, go and play with the kids and they do little sciencey stuff with them and that sort of thing. So that's another reason why if you're a family, it's a really, really cool place to go for brunch because there's a pool for the kids to play at. And basically what had happened is when I had my um, eyebrows waxed, I get the worst reaction to the eyebrow waxing. So now I look like I've got little dots everywhere. So I think of all the breakfast places, my favourite is Cinder, just because of the vibe and the bacon was really good and I said bacon like five times. What do you think? What was your favourite? Let us know down below. And if you have any recommendations about breakfast places we should try and review, please do let us know. And um, if you chuck a like and a comment, it helps the algorithm gods and we really appreciate it. So because we want to make this a thing eventually, uh, we'd really appreciate support. Hey, so like on the third or fourth day that we were here, there was a significant earthquake. It was like 5.4 or something. And I'm from Christchurch when I studied during the big earthquakes in 2011. And it was, the reaction from both of us was kind of strange. So like Donna will explain her experience. She was a lot more affected than I was. And I kind of like laughed 
and then was like, oh, that's a 5.4. And I literally called the magnitude of it to a, like to a T because I'd just been in so many in Christchurch. So I was like, it's another day. And then I realized like, holy shit, this is the first significant earthquake that Donna would have been in. And she comes bursting in the door, door flings wide open. There's a look of terror on her face. I'm like, shit, Christ. And she's like, what do I do? And I was like, just get in the bathroom. Cause she's trying to run out the door. And you're not supposed to run out the door in an earthquake in case something falls you know, straight after. So I was like, go into the bathroom. And she's like in the bathroom holding Zali on one hand, like terrified. Um, and I'm like, it's okay, just breathe. And she's like, <laughs> and she has to, we have to end up on the bar upstairs to have some alcohol so she can watch the ocean. So we just had our first earthquake in Bali. Hey Zali, say hi. And uh... I'm just shitting myself. I'm still <laughs> shaky. But so we're up here because this is, uh, I don't know if you can see that, this is a um, tsunami evacuation zone and Donna just wanted to look at the ocean, which is flat as anything, by the way. <laughs> so, just to make feel a bit better. So here we are, doing a vlog and thank you, Zali. And also I want a cocktail to calm my nerves a little yeah. bit. <laughs> yeah, no, but to be fair, so what happened from my perspective was I didn't actually know what was happening. Like all of a sudden everything started like rumbling and it, like I just didn't register, like I froze. And then our nanny was standing in front of us and she was literally just leaving for the day. Kind of thank goodness because um, she would have had Zali otherwise probably somewhere else in the building in the playroom or something. So there was a little bit of nerves around that. And um, she just looked at me, she screamed and then she ran away. And I was kind of like, what's happening? And then I registered and I went, oh shit, I better go get her. So then I went to go out the door to get her to come back because I do I do actually know you're not meant to go outside, but I was trying to get her to come back. And then Caleb's like, no, don't chase after her. Like, it's fine. It's safe in here. You know, she's already gone. Um, and that's when he pulled she's me into dead. the bathroom. She's gone now. <laughs> it's too late. You can't save the daddy. She's gone. <laughs> she's long gone. Um, and she literally was like, when it's <laughs> she <stopped. kept> it. <laughs> <laughs> she, was, she went from like floor three down like two flights of stairs in 10 seconds. <laughs> like when it stopped, Bam. we went outside and like went to go check if she was okay. And she was like all the way, like we looked down the um, stairwell. It's all the way down and the bottom. She's all the way down the bottom like, I'm fine. I'm fine, I'm okay. I'm like, it's a good thing you're looking out for our daughter because if anything went wrong, we've got Usain Bolt as our nanny. It's like, pew. <laughs> So funny thing, when we landed here, all of a sudden I started like holding Zali in the front pack a lot more, um, you know, going for walks, going on the scooter, you know, that sort of thing. Whereas back home, like you just chuck her in the pram or in the car seat or, you know, she'd crawl around on the floor at home and all that sort of thing. And so um, I'd actually hurt my back um, carrying her around so much. And so I went to the doctors and I was a little bit nervous about that. Like I was kind of thinking like, oh shit, like, you know, I've hurt myself if over in Bali, like they probably won't be able to help me went in there and it's much better like medical service than what you get even in a western country at the moment like in a western country at the moment sorry my hand was there um in a western country at the moment like you have to wait ages to go and see a doctor and they you know not even sure if they're gonna let you in or whatever we walked in within two minutes the doctor saw me gave me some medication booked me with the physio physio was amazing and a completely like my back is amazing now um but yeah it was interesting actually one of the days when <laughs> I was coming home from the busy year. I was walking down the street and I saw this cow in the middle of the road. I was like, oh, cool, cow in the middle of the road. Like, you don't see that every day kind of thing in a Western country. Anyway, I'm like, well, I couldn't walk away from it. Like, that's the way that I'm going home. So I'm like walking towards it, hoping like, you know, it won't come near me or whatever. And then next thing you know, the bloody thing starts like moving towards me. Um, so I've actually, I captured as much as I could of that on camera. But there was like a little part of that that I kind of chunked out on because I was like, I just need to run and get away from this thing that's chasing me. Oh my God, it started running towards me and I ran across the other side of the street. 